be ready in God's hand. If he comes back for us before he gets right, he'll make it right. He'll make it right. Fifteen verses, the sun and the moon will become dark, and the stars will start shining. This is uh, when the Lord is on his way back. He said, when judgment day. And then he lets us know. His voice will thunder, the Lord will roar like a lion from Jerusalem. His voice will thunder from the, that city, and the sky and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be a safe place for his people. The Lord is a safe place for his people. Oh, don't worry about it, he's saying. He said, I am a safe place for you, a strong place of safety for the people of Israel in us. 17, you will know that I, the Lord, that I, the Lord, your God, that on my holy Mount Zion, Jerusalem, will be a holy place. And strangers will never even go through it again. So, so the Lord promises us good things. He promises to do good things for us. He, he, he never uh, forgets his promise. So I th thank God for the value of the sin since the Lord wants us to make up our minds there. Don't be in the valley of the sins where people can't make up their minds. He said, make that means where the Lord judges today. And there's no need for anybody to lie. Or we have to make a decision whether to tell the truth or tell a lie. Well, I don't know what to do. And they be pondering. Just like uh, Joel was reading about Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, they fell dead, they, they, they didn't have to lie. Uh -huh. They didn't even have to lie. It was their money to do with this. If they pleased, but they were promised to give so much and so much. And when they got that money, then you can do it. And I, you know, I say, so I'm done this. Uh, some people, I want well, some people with certain churches will make the promises that uh, if I get, when I get this and that, I'm going to bless the church. They got it, they invest the church, they got brand new cars, some, some of them get brand new cars, but they got cars. But, but the, Lord, the Lord saw that. And so when people start going through all, through all kind of hell, uh, once somebody came here and uh, a relative said, uh, when Bishop retired, they didn't know he going he to get a Cadillac. And I went, went to their house and the car we got now, I said, this is our Cadillac right here. We <laughs> got it painted, got it painted, and, and this, is our, this is the Cadillac. And then saying that, because see, sometimes people try to prophesy things that you're going you to do uh, and want to see if you're going to uh, say it, uh, answer that. So when they said it, Bishop didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing. So I used to thought it was right on, right on it. But because somebody else gets something, I mean, you get it. And so we have never, never got a brand new automobile. We got cars that didn't put us down. He, Bishop always picked good, good automobiles that weren't going to tear up. And also, when he, when he uh, retired, he just got the same car we got now. He got it painted and it keeps it clean. So I thank and praise God. It's not what you got, it's what you. Yeah. Take care of we don't have to have the best, but you take care of what you got. So I thank and praise God for the value of the decision. We have to make decisions for our families. There are all kinds of decisions. The women of God have to make decisions for their families, and husbands have to make decisions. And if a woman don't have a husband, she got, she got to be the decision maker. She, she got to make all of the decisions. And sometimes personal decisions, uh, a man or either woman have to make personal. And so we have to consult God. What do you do? Because if you consult people, they will tell you something entirely different than what the Lord would say. And just recently, we had a decision to make about something. And I had wrote the letter. And both of us slept on it. And Bishop woke up the next day. He said, you know what? We're not going to send that letter. I said, we brought back the letter. And for them. I think it's happened. He brought it up. I said, "We met the Lord don't want to send it." He said, "How do you know this?" That's what I'm saying. I said, "It does help. It, it does help to sleep on a thing before you make a decision. You can be being already made this decision, and then when you sleep on it, the Lord say, "No, no, don't do that." So when he woke up that morning, we discussed it. Both of us came to the same pool and said, you know, it, it helps us sleep. Don't, don't act in the spirit of the moment. We have to make any kind of decision. Don't let nobody pressure you. 
uh, we we learn we learn this from listening to somebody talk about say if somebody say I have to have a decision right away. Say, well I'm sorry, you don't need it. Not today. Mm-hmm. But whenever they whenever they try to pressure you, you usually they don't have to have that decision. They try to make you get one though. We say we feel that well if you can get it to him now you can't renege. But when he walked up I mean, I woke up we talked about that. He said and we we not gonna send another I say we we just gonna wait till that individual show up and then if they show up then we just tell them we just not gonna send no response and that's why I agree with what he was saying sometimes no no response is a, is a response not to not to send an answer is an is is an answer letting that person know I'm not gonna respond to you and some things is not. In response to what Joe was saying, some things is not giving it too much. Uh, you, you you don't respond to everything because it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Some people say things to you to see how you're gonna answer, but when you don't answer, you let them know he's not even worth, what you're saying is not even worth a response. Just leave it this way. Just leave it hanging. Oh, you just gonna leave me hanging? That's what you do. Mm-hmm. So it's so afraid of young people. I hear people say, "Oh, you just gonna leave me hanging?" When they reach that shit, hand, that's what you do. It's leave me on the hand because it's not worth the risk for. Every, every time somebody make a statement, I can hear them. You can hear them, but don't respond to them. They, they, they say, "Oh, they must be hearing." Oh, yes, you heard them. But don't respond. You know. So I thank you, praise God, for the value of decisions. And sometimes. You you can't just don't make no decision, just leave it alone. God may say, just leave it alone. He he been already done worked it out. Because he said in his word that he worked he, he uh that does the thing from the end from the begin from the beginning. When we go through something, God already working he knows the end from the beginning. We just going through we don't know. But he knows the end from the beginning. Just like that your little girl said on Texas ring when she died and her mom kept on praying. I said, why her mom keep praying, her grandma? And she kept on praying. She know her heart had stopped, but she kept saying, Lord, bring her back. And she said, she didn't deserve this because she was, it was a gang shooter and we shot her back and they stayed believing Then they asked sorry for her. And, and she went, she had died and then her, her grandma kept on praying and then it said, she stopped coming back and the room lit up and she started saying, that she saw an angel and she told her grandma it was going to be all right. So I thank the prayer, praise God, that that, that picture, and Bishop said, he take some of it. But I thank you, praise God, because she kneeled down right in front of the people, in front of the gang, they came with a gun to shoot, to shoot that little girl because she could identify them. She knelt down on her knees right in front of them and, be, and began to pray. They couldn't shoot her then, but it came back. And she t- told me that the angel said, Grandma, no matter how it looks, her angel said it's going to be all right. So I thank and praise God. Uh, when God says something is going to be all right, you don't worry about it. Because they was, they was saying, this little girl, don't, she don't know what she's talking about. But she did know what she was talking about. And God worked that thing out. And so it happens in real life, just that where people try to pressure you to do something. And just to say something, and God been already working out. All we have to do is hold out peace. So I thank and praise God for the valley of the sins. And I thank God how He works things out in everybody's life. And people right in Him, like God began to work things out for them. I I thank and praise God. They know who they, they know who they are. But God knows how to work things out in their life. And our life to bring joy, happiness, and peace. But so definitely wants to have joy, happiness, and peace. So I thank God for the valley of this season, the valley where God judges. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for the word coming from Prophet Benjamin tonight. Amen.